<laughs> and this comment kills me every time. Enemy has a full board with 28, 28, Edwin, etc. And then Reno comes out and just goes buff. <laughs> hey, buddy, watch this. All right, folks. So in a previous video, we already covered your most hated Hearthstone cards. And now we're going to talk about your most loved Hearthstone cards. These are the ones you guys actually really like to play, although it turns out there's quite a bit of crossover between the most hated and most loved. Before we jump into the list, I'd like to thank our sponsor for this video real quickly. It's Keeps, who we'll talk about a little bit more later. But for now, here's your number 10 most loved card. It's Malagos. There really weren't too many uh, classic and basic cards mentioned at all by people, but it turns out the crazy OTK combo potential of Malagos has earned him a spot here on the list. And I agree with what our second commenter here says, uh, that Malagos really does give a powerful feel when it's in play. Anytime it shows up randomly, for instance, off some kind of evolve effect or summon effect, it's like, oh my god, this game just changed in an enormous way. How can I use this thing to my benefit? And in some ways, I do like that that exists. In other ways, I do sometimes hate the oppressive, crazy combos that can exist because of cards like Malagos. But thankfully, those haven't been too impactful in the meta. So yeah, Malagos from time to time has bugged me, but for the most part, I do think this is a pretty cool card to exist. Having that really crazy scaled spell damage is pretty darn fun, and it's um, an iconic Warcraft dragon as well. So sure enough, Malagos, I like you too. Moving on to number nine, it's Bandersmosh. I really can't believe a card like Bandersmosh made this list. It's not something we've really seen in the Hearthstone meta at all, but it turns out I think, you know, the name is funny, the artwork's pretty cool, and the effect is really, really fun because of the absurd high roll potential. You can see one commenter here mentions things like Hyreek and Emrys on turn five. That can be busted. We've done some, some Emrys shenanigans with Bandersmosh ourself doubling the battle cries and such turning into just ridiculously huge minions and they are right that um you know it's not so consistent that it becomes like oppressive or you know offers a lot of negative feelings it's just kind of a spectacle when it works uh, a second commenter here went really really in depth with an, <laughs> with an incredibly detailed response when asked why they love bandersmosh so much they just wrote bandersmosh and I don't think it was like filling in the form wrong because they put a period, which indicates they wanted that to be their sentence. That's all they had to say is just banner smosh. So now let's move over to High Bear and Togwaggle. I thought this card would be more hated than loved, but sure enough, you're in the top 10. And uh, <laughs> I love this comment. Thank you, blessed Togwaggle, for allowing me to pull wins out of my ass. With you in my deck, there's always a chance for a comeback. Uh, pulling things out of your seems to be a real theme for these videos. Uh, Zephyrus hated because he pulls things out of his ass, and High Spirit and Togwaggle loved because he pulls things out of his ass. But I personally don't really like Togwaggle all that much. I think the shenanigans that Wondrous Wand provides, drawing lots of zero mana cards, creates this kind of swing meta. A lot of people call it like a, you know, stealing game kind of meta. And I do think that's problematic from time to time. I like when games are played a little bit more straight up, and Togwaggle rarely allows that to happen. So... Togwaggle is definitely not a card that I love because of all the pulling. At the number seven spot, it's Shutterwalk. <laughs> and really, all we needed to say about this one is my jaws that bite, my claws that catch. Apparently, some people like hearing that phrase. I don't think I'm one of them after I heard it eight million times the day the Witchwood launched. Uh, but it is true that Shutterwalk can provide some crazy over the top combos. As one commenter puts it, there are some ridiculous plays that can happen with Shutterwalk. And uh, I do think, um, even though it can be oppressive in some ways, unlike a card like Kaisbear and Togwaggle, it feels a little more straight up to me for some reason, because you kind of know what's coming, you can prepare for it in a way, you understand that their whole deck is built to support that. Whereas Togwaggle in some ways just feels like, oh, okay, a bunch of random cards were drawn and now I just lose to this ridiculous setup. Shutterwalk feels more predictable and reliable, and for that reason, I, I am coming around to Shutterwalk. I like it more than I used to. I still have some pretty negative feelings from time to time when he has, has ruined the game in some ways, but uh, lately in Shaman, he doesn't feel oppressive at all, and actually pretty fun to build weird decks around him. So, yeah, Shutterwalk, I think he's had his time, but nonetheless, a card I enjoy. Moving on here to Whizbang the Wonderful. I'm really glad Whizbang 
made the cut on this list. It's one of those cards that's, for most players, kind of easy to forget. But there are so many people out there who rely on Whizbang to drive their Hearthstone experience because Whizbang allows you to play with cards and decks that you might otherwise never be able to afford or have access to. Uh, as our as our commenter puts it, I love Whizbang since it's a card that helps free to play players, and every expansion makes the card fresher. That's true too. It gets updated all the time as new deck lists are added into Hearthstone. So you can use just this one card to have a complete full Hearthstone experience. And I think that's pretty darn amazing. Very nice that Blizzard even added this into the game. I'm sort of shocked that they did, but nonetheless, they wanted more people to enjoy Hearthstone. And that's a great thing, uh, particularly when people get to save some money. Now that said, Whizbang rotating out of standard format is gonna leave a gap there. So I hope Blizzard fixes that somehow, adding this to the classic set, or maybe creating a new card much like Whizbang that's thematically matching some future set. Because this is definitely something I think Hearthstone needs, and certainly a card that I love too. All right, so now into the top five. I almost can't believe the amazing Reno made the cut. This card's barely been out, it feels like, but nonetheless, uh, top five spots. People really, really enjoy the amazing Reno. <laughs> and this comment kills me every time. I love Reno against almost every deck. Enemy has a full board with 28, 28, Edwin, etc. And then, or actually, und then, Reno comes out and just goes buff. <laughs> they got the word wrong. It's, <laughs> it's supposed to be poof. <laughs> but he says it just goes buff. <laughs> All right. All right, let's move on to Tess Graveman. I don't think she has any puffs in her. Uh, Tess is uh, our number four card, and uh, Tess is um, a card that's surprising to see because Tess is really not a popular meta card by any means. It's not something we see used daily, but it's just one of those cards that um, builds a super fun archetype around it in the kind of thief burgle rogue style. It's got like some fringe viability. It's never been like a tier one deck, but you can play it. And I think that's a perfect combination of a card that's just like super duper fun. Because when you play Tess, it, it really is true that chaos is given form here, as our commenter says. Um, it's just you don't know what you're going to get every time you start a game. What cards are you going to burgle? How is that going to interact with Tess? How big of a turn is she going to make? Is she going to completely backfire? Trying to figure out answers to all those questions is what makes this one so enjoyable. And I, like I think pretty much everybody else, love playing Tess Greymane. This is the kind of card I wish would move to uh, a classic or basic card. Maybe rotate Edwin out, bring in Tess Greymane, because she just feels so cool to play. And I'm going to be sad to see this one rotating out very, very soon. Moving into the top three with Dragon Queen Alex Straza. Uh, I do... <laughs> I just read that comment. Bruh, it's free dragons. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, she is indeed free dragons, which is pretty cool. And, of course, a staple among Highlander style decks, which are very, very popular in Hearthstone right now. I think our top three you'll see here are just, like, the powerful cards that everybody likes playing in as many decks as they can. And when you have a big, powerful card that wins you games, that tends to be something you associate with good feelings, and that ends up being a card that you love. So Dragon Queen Alexstrasza, another big iconic dragon, one of the most recognized Warcraft characters, a deck defining sort of card, um, still got a little bit of RNG and, and chaos inside of it as well. And bruh, it's free dragons. That's the ultimate combination. Now with the number two spot, we've got Zephyrus the Great, who also featured very highly on our most hated cards. Uh, but Zephyrus here, the second most beloved card in Hearthstone, which doesn't really surprise me at all. Much like Dragon Queen Alexstrasza, of course, a staple for Highlander, a card that wins you a ton of games. People are going to enjoy that sort of thing. But I think everybody has to admit that there's some accomplishment here in figuring out how to implement this card into Hearthstone, where it's solving all these problems for you on the fly. And although, yes, Zephyrus can sometimes surprise us and do things we don't want, like 98% of the time, he really is offering you the best card for the situation. And that creates some strategic moments where you have to, like, you know, manipulate the board or game state in such a way to give you what you want. But also sometimes it just surprises you and he's smarter than you are. And I think that's really, really cool that Blizzard was able to design and structure a card in a way like that that actually works 
most of the time. That's a triumphant design element to me. And um, although, yes, Zephyrus can be frustrating and problematic, still a card I'm really, really glad to have in Hearthstone. So before I get into the top card for this video, I want to talk about our sponsor, Keeps. Because if you don't know Keeps, they're all about your hair. And sometimes you need hair that is precise and hair that is perfect. You can hit that level of precision and perfection with Keeps. Keeps has revolutionized the way men are treated for hair loss. It's up to 90% effective at reducing and stopping further hair loss. So find out why Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors and nearly 100,000 dudes trust Keeps for their hair loss prevention medication. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash Regis to receive 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Regis. Yeah, that's right. Our number one card, if you didn't guess it, despite not having any hair, although, you know, a few interesting protrusions up there on his head, it's Zilliax, and uh, one commenter put it so succinctly and so perfectly in a way that no one can really explain better. Unity, precision, perfection. That's Zilliax, the most played card in Hearthstone's history, as far as I can remember, maybe not cumulatively across all metas, but certainly within his era, reaching 50 plus percent of decks played is absolutely ridiculous. The most flexible card, some would argue one of the most balanced cards ever designed, also hated by a lot of people that turns out, but also loved. And uh, I get that. Zilliax is feeling like a very iconic Hearthstone card these days. Lots of different keywords, lots of different styles of play. Different kinds of decks can utilize that one. This means everybody kind of gets to use Zilliax, have some fun, have those big swing turns and moments. And sure enough, that makes Zilliax the most loved card in Hearthstone. And there you go, folks. That wraps it up for this video. We've now seen the most hated and most loved Hearthstone cards. Thanks, of course, for sharing your takes on these cards. We'll do some videos like these in the future as we see some new expansions and new metas. So stay tuned for future polls where I ask you guys to share hilarious comments like this time around. That said, of course, share your thoughts on uh, these cards, cards that weren't on this list in the comments below. But until then, thanks much for watching and until next time, game on.